I have received on my doorstep a yellow piece of paper. You living in the Central Corridor have probably also seen yellow pieces of paper. They're getting very, very common around here. If it's not a yellow piece of paper, it's a letter or maybe even a phone call. And let me go over the gist of what these letters and phone calls and yellow pieces of paper are all going to say. I am very interested in buying your home. If there's any chance you'd be willing to sell, I will make you a cash offer. As is, no commissions, no fees. Please give me a call. Name withheld to protect the guilty. So, the phone call I got was from this really nice lady the other day. And she calls me up and she's like, Hi, I was just wondering, uh, you know, I'm working with my partner and we're investors and we want to know if you want to if you want to sell your house. And I'm in real estate and every piece of property is for sale at some price or another. And I go, sure thing. Let's have a conversation. Just want to let you know, I'm a licensed real estate agent in the state of Arizona. Are you? And she goes, well, me and my partner are very interested in buying houses. So I start listening to the background and I'm hearing that call center noise. You're hearing other people talk in the background. They also got that, you know, the background voices have that fake motivation that you hear at a call center. So I'm pretty sure I'm not dealing with a real human being at this point. And I go and I say, well, that sounds great. You know, like I said, I'm a real estate agent here in Arizona. What would you like to pay for my house? And she goes, well, what we really want to do is we want to know how much you want to sell your house for. And I say, $350,000. And she doesn't even bat an eye. And it's like $350,000. Now, if she knows who I am, she should know the address I'm looking at, at, living at. And if she knows the address I'm living at, then she should know roughly what the price of my house is if she's a real investor. But she doesn't, right? Because $350,000, she should have laughed. That's how you can tell a real investor from a fake investor, right? Because real investors know the price of the property before they even call, right? So she doesn't make blink an eye. She goes, okay, well, we will have to get my partner out there to take a look at your property, and then we'll be happy to write an offer. And I went, no, 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 we're not going to do that. This is what's going to happen. You're going to write me an offer for $350,000. You're going to close in 15 days, cash, no inspection period. And you're going to be putting down $15,000 in earnest money, non-refundable. $15,000 hard earnest money. At that point, you can walk into the property and tell me yes or no. We're buying the house for $350,000 or we're not buying the house for $350,000. That's the deal. And her response is, well, we have to see the house first. And I, no, you don't. You want to write an offer? You should know how much my house is worth. Write the offer. Deposit the money in escrow. All right, come see if you want to go through with the deal or not. She goes back onto her chair. Well, we have to schedule. And I say, ma'am, what's my job? Big, long pause. I told you what I do for a living twice. What is my job? Big, long, pregnant pause. Well, sir, can we schedule something for next week for Joe to come? And I'm like, okay, ma'am, you... We've had a really good time, but I don't get involved in you know, real estate transactions with amateurs. And I hang up the phone on her. The reason why I do all of this, and particularly to this person, because she caught me in a really, really bad mood that day, but the reason why these people are calling around is because they want to buy your house. They're investors, all right? Investors are a very vital part of our real estate ecology, right? They do really good things with properties. Unfortunately, they also do really bad things with properties. So, before you call this gentleman here, all right, and this is actually in high definition recorded, so you might actually be able to zoom in on that gentleman's name right there, but before you sell to an investor, all right, let's discuss a couple things about what happens when you sell to a real estate investor, all right? Investors are buying the property to make money, all right? Remember that, all right? There are reasons and times when you want to sell an investor and there's times when you don't want to sell to an investor right if you want to sell an investor if you need to get out of the property fast all right investors can close pretty much faster than anybody else on the face of the planet all right somebody who's coming in with a loan or uh, going through a real estate agent writing contracts inspection periods this and that and the other thing appraisers coming out looking at the property and with you know the lo new loan laws it can take up to like 45 days that's after you've got a contract that's not even time on the market having people come in and look at your kitchen make snarky comments about the tile you took down the backsplash 
right? Investors don't do that, right? They generally come in, they're using their money or somebody else's money, but they have it in hand already. And they walk in and go, we can close on this in 15 days, all right? And you're out. 15 days is over, you hand over the keys, you have money in your hand, and you're off to the next chapter of your life. Investors are really, really good at that, all right? So if you need to get out of a property fast, that's, investors are really good at finger foolishness. Number two, if your house has problems with the condition that you were concerned about. All right, what I mean by houses that you were concerned about. The kitchen is gone. They literally sold the house last year. The tenants had torn the kitchen out. All right, because they tore the kitchen out and then turned around and told the person, the kit, we had to tear the kitchen out because of black mold that we discovered. And we had to tear it out. You need to put a new kitchen in. Right? That's the time you, you could sell to an investor. A regular person coming in there is not going to be able to afford the time to put a kitchen in. That's where you sell, sell to an investor. The third reason why you can sell to an investor is if you want out fast, you're concerned about the condition, all right, and you don't care about the price. All right? If you do not care about how much money you're going to get out of your property, selling to an investor, you get speed and you get convenience. Those are your two great things. And I've had people come up to me before. It's like, I just, I don't care about the money. Just get this off my hands. I don't want to deal with this thing anymore. Any price, no matter, just get it gone. All right? I'd like to be in a position where I can just throw, you know, that much money away. But some people aren't. Some people just don't care anymore. So if you're at the point where you don't mind selling this property for, you know, 60, 70 cents on the dollar, which is the goal that most investors, most good investors look at, then an investor is really the way to go on this. All right? Because good investors, not all investors, right? but good investors that are going to be out there for a little while, they know they want to make their money on the purchase of the property, not the sale of the property. The sale is actually when they just realize their profit. But if I can walk into a place and I can buy your house for 60% of full value, meaning if it's a $100,000 house, I'm writing you a check for $60,000. Right? I just made $40,000 worth of profit by signing a piece of paper. And I will do that all freaking day long. Right? And so will investors, the good ones. Bad investors, and I probably shouldn't say bad, but I, let's call them um, not as good investors, will sit there and they will try to add value to the property. They will buy a property for full price, and they will pretty the kitchen up and they will replace the carpet, and they will do everything else, and then they will try to sell it with the extra money that they put into it, and then try. hopefully the value that they put into it exceeds the amount of money that they put into it. And, but you'll see, I've seen a lot of guys try that, and they don't try it for that long. Usually, they do two or three deals. They have one deal that really, really, really kills them. All right? They get out. If they're lucky, they get out clean. Sometimes they'll get out losing money that they think, and they're just done. Right? So that's one of the things you know you need to look at when you're dealing with you know with investors is the um, education and experience level of the person that's purchasing it. Right? This ran well pretty much longer than I wanted to already because I talk a lot. But the second uh, we're going to do another another video on this. We'll co we'll cover everything else. Uh, the problems to look for when you're actually looking to sell to an investor if you're not using a real estate agent.